Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Zach Grant again with the Urban and Connect vlog series. And today I'm going to actually talk about um, setting up these delta traps uh, for monitoring, for pest monitoring. And I have a very specific pest I'm going to start monitoring for. I have a few lures I'm going to use throughout the season, maybe more. I'm going to show you how I'm going to set this particular uh, monitoring station up and the rationale for, for why I'm, I'm doing this. So let's go ahead and, and check that out. And this will be part of a, I have a series of other videos where I've will be releasing uh, related to biological control in the high tunnels. Uh, so kind of a little bit of a series in integrated pest management. Well, wanting to do more pest monitoring at the site and incorporating that into the vlog and other uh, newsletters uh, to kind of inform growers when they might be on the lookout for certain pests. So let's go ahead and check this out. All right, so let's talk a little bit about setting up these monitoring traps for, for certain pests. So here's a Sentry LP uh, Delta trap, and they make, you know, these different types of traps uh, for a lot of different pests. These are, I think, primarily used for monitoring moth flights uh, for certain, like, orchard pests and things like that. And I'm actually going to purpose repurpose this uh, for the target pest that we're going to talk about today. And that target pest is Swede Midge. So Swede Midge is a, a you know, very small mosquito-like midge. Uh, and the, the main issue with it is the uh, larva that it lays. So in, in brassica crops that are sensitive to it, like broccoli, for instance, kohlrabi, uh, those of you, especially in Cook County, this has been a little bit of an issue. We've had some positive IDs where you are midway through the season with the brassica and you notice that the, the apical meristem has just been terminated or it's dead or some twisting of the leaves. A lot of times that can be attributed to sweet midge damage. So they're really hard to control because they're hard to see. So part of what we're hoping to do with monitoring is being able to get these pheromone lures out in these traps to see when they emerge from the soil. And then we might be able to implement some control methodologies. For organic control, typically what's recommended is you rotate away from where you had brassica species the previous year, I believe. Know, more than 50 yards and then use some sort of insect netting. Now there there are some other cultural techniques that we're not going to talk about today uh, but one of the things I'm hoping to do with this is also be able to potentially spray some organic uh, pest control products like pyganic uh, or neem oils that I, I think will kill the midge but you have to kill the midge before they lay the larva so we want to try to detect when they're first flying and emerging before they would actually lay the larva in the meristem. And that's when you might be able to get some control from spraying early. It's not guaranteed, but I, I want to give it a try this year. We haven't had too much pressure. I don't or really any identified pressure here at Sosuko, but I've actually given these monitoring traps to a couple other growers in Cook County uh, who have had some sweet midge issues in the past. So we're hoping to maybe detect the first flights of Swede Midge and then be able to at least early warn, uh, maybe do some uh, early spraying in order to do this. So the what I'm going to do is I've already kind of pre-constructed this. Is if I normally these delta traps you hang them up, you know, from a tree branch or on the perimeter of an orchard or a garden or a farm site. In this case, and I learned this from Kelly Estes, our invasive species specialists, they were doing some monitoring for Sweden Midge at our site last year, and they had smaller versions of these traps, but what they were doing is setting up a little triangle delta trap vertically, or perpendicular to the soil, and I think the reason rationale for that is you keep it close to the soil, because if when the Sweden Midge emerges from the soil, it'll want to fly up, it'll sense the pheromone, and then come into the delta trap and get stuck on, on the sticky trap that's on the bottom portion of this. So that's how I'm going to set this trap up today, and how I'm doing that, I already have, some I have it preset up. I just have a wooden stake that I've drilled a hole through that is going to be the main support. So you can see, you can see the wire is going to get stuck through there so it doesn't slide down the post. But what I'm going to do is take that out first, and I'm going to pull out the old Swede Midge lure. So this is what the Swede Midge lure looks like, and I have a new one right here. Okay, so th these are, are about a year old. Um, I don't know how effective these are going to be, to tell you the truth. Uh, but I was given the tip that if you keep them in the freezer, if you don't use them in one year, you could probably use them. They'll be effective for the following year. But they shouldn't be 
any more effective than, than two years. Um, this does say production date 2018, so I might have to order some more of these. these th this isn't cheap. Uh, I think for three of these Sweet Midge lures, it was around $40, I want to say. So it's not exactly, um, it's not super expensive, but it's also not no expense. So the, the Sweet Midge lure is just coming in this little uh, package here. And I believe the, I don't know exactly how it works, because I'm not an IPM specialist, but um, the lure, the pheromone lure is maybe in this plastic cap right here. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and pull out this little cardboard piece here and loop the lure through this wire piece inside of the trap. So I'll show you what it looks like here in a second as soon as I get it through there. You know, and this wire comes with the trap itself. So I'm looping it. I looped it through this, through the trap itself, and then back through the little hole that I drilled in the wood post. And I'm just gonna crank that over like that. Okay, and then you can see inside the pheromone lure is hang dangling from there. And then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take the sticky trap. So this sticky trap, I'm gonna unfold it and it fits down in the delta trap like that. And then when I close this piece on top of it, that'll hold it in place. And then I'll have it vertical, come to the ground. The idea is they come out of the soil, sense the pheromone lure, fly up into the trap and get stuck to the sticky trap. And then hopefully I'll be able to identify the sweet midge with a magnifying lens. And if not, I might have to send it down to the plant clinic on campus for proper ID. So here's a sticky trap for the, for the Delta trap. I'm just gonna go ahead and unfold it. It's very sticky. I'm gonna slide it down into the delta trap itself, close this flap, and then that way the sticky card in there shouldn't move even when it's vertical. And then that pheromone lure would just be will be dangling right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pound this into the soil. So this is you know maybe about a foot uh, above the soil. And hopefully we'll be able to trap some uh, sweet midge in there and properly identify it. So I'll go ahead and, and take this out and get this in the location I want it, and I'll show you some video of what that looks like. All right, so here I've pounded the, the trap into the ground. And you can, if we look down into it, you can see the pheromone lure is right there. Oh, focus. And the sticky trap is right there. So I think the idea is that if they emerge from the cell, they'll fly up searching for that pheromone and then get stuck to the sticky trap and I'll be able to identify them. So I did have some brassicas in this bed last year. So that's primarily why I'm putting it here. I think, so what goes on with sweet midge is that they, they overwinter in the soil and when they emerge, they're relatively weak flyers. So they might not be able to make it more than like 50 yards away from where they emerge. So I do have some brassicas over here in this raised bed. So, I have this relatively close. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it there and just monitor that sticky trap on a regular basis uh, to see if I can actually pick up any, any sweet midge and identify them properly. I'll try to identify them there. I'm not an expert in sweet midge ID, but I'm gonna try to identify it with my magnifying lens. And if I can't, I may send it down, send pictures of it. And I'll show you how to do that. I can actually take magnified pictures with my iPhone and send that to the plant clinic or our invasive species specialist. All right, so I'm gonna do this for Swede Midge. I'm looking to do it for brown marmorated stink bug and for uh, squash vine borer as well. So I'm gonna show you, we'll set up some traps for that a little bit later when we're expecting a flight of those pest species. Okay, so just wanted to show you that. Like I said, we'll loop this together with some of our other IPM videos and blogs. All right, have a good day.